another read aloud chapter. For this chapter, I'm going to save the thinking question until the end to prevent giving away a spoiler. So we're just going to jump right in. Chapter 23, how someone had to ruin it all. The palace was huge and it was situated right on the edge of the forest. Part of it even went into the forest. This kept the area very private. It wasn't as though people from the city couldn't see the palace if they walked by, but it was out of the way, and people would have to purposefully travel toward it to get a good view. There was no moat and drawbridge as Arella had imagined, but there was a very large wall surrounding the entire building and several balconies. Once they arrived, the protest was surprisingly organized. After the initial protest that included everyone, the teens protested in shifts, as Bev had suggested. As the first group shouted and held up signs, the other two groups rested or talked amongst themselves. Piker and Pip, the two immature boys who'd been spitting on people through the window the day before, made faces and obnoxious noises at the palace guards, trying to get a reaction out of them. They failed. Arella and Mavic helped set up camp, so it would be ready when night fell. The palace was so close to the edge of the forest that they could camp among the trees and remain in front of the palace gates. When it came their turn to take a shift, Arella declined and sat down on a fallen tree. She felt like a liar. This witch hunt was her fault after all. These protesters should be yelling and shouting at her. Come on, Ella, urged Mavic. If you think about it, you of all people should want to do this. Why? because no one has more to gain from this being over than us. Mavic, shh! Arella looked around them in panic. Someone will hear you. Oh, fine. Mavic joined in the protest with gusto, and Arella enjoyed watching him shout and stomp around. It was amusing rather than intimidating. He looked like a little boy having a temper tantrum. Your brother seems to be having a good time. Arella jumped, startled. Sorry. Kayla smiled, holding up her hands. Oh, it's fine, Arella sighed in relief. What did you say? I said your brother seems to be having a good time. My brother, Arella repeated, distracted from watching the protest. Kayla looked confused. Isn't Mavic your brother? You just look so much alike, I just assumed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's my brother. Arella mentally facepalmed her forehead. Keep track of your aliases, outlaw. You two seem really close. Kayla smiled wistfully as she sat down next to Arella. Yeah, we're kind of all each other has. No other family? Arella was about to claim that they'd grown up in an orphanage, which is what Mavic had told Bev yesterday, but couldn't bring herself to say it. She missed her parents so much that she wanted to cry, and she needed to talk about it or she felt like she'd explode from grief. We had to leave them back in Lenick. I'm so sorry, sweetie. Kayla put her arm around Arella's shoulder and gave her a squeeze. You know, you're not alone. Almost everyone here had to run away and leave their families behind, except for Bev. He left because he got fed up. What about your family? Arella picked up a stick and began carving pictures into the log. I have a mom and a sister. Kayla smiled sadly. She also picked up a stick and added leaves to the flower Arella had carved into the tree. They're safe at our home here in Hemlock. My mom begged me not to join this protest, but I just wanted to put a stop to it all, you know, before anything happened to my family. Plus, those bees have had their eye on me forever, and I didn't want to give them the chance to take me. This place is so messed up, Arella mumbled, her shoulders slumped with guilt and she stopped drawing. I wonder what triggered it all, Kayla mused. I mean, that Arella girl, the real one, had to have done something really bad to be accused of witchcraft. Arella tensed and clutched her stick tighter. You don't think she's actually a witch? Kayla laughed. Oh, please, you don't buy into all that nonsense, do you? It's ridiculous. Yeah, totally ridiculous, Arella agreed nervously. Kayla studied Arella's troubled expression. What? I was just thinking, started Arella, looking down at her toes. I mean, 
if she really was a witch, as crazy as that would be, do you think she deserves to be hanged? Of course not. From the posters, she just looks like a scared little girl. That Mavic guy looks a little dangerous, though. He acts like a little boy, Arella mumbled. What was that? I mean, yeah, totally dangerous. I don't know why, but for some reason I find that kind of attractive. Arella resisted the urge to gag. Great, she even likes him as himself. What are you guys talking about? Mavic interrupted, clomping over to them. He sat down next to Kayla. Were you talking about me? He grinned cockily. You wish, grinned Kayla. I was talking about the other Mavic. I don't know what it is, but from that picture, he just looks so tough. And I think he's kind of hot. When Kayla wasn't looking, Mavic put his thumbs up and nodded as he mouthed. Arella rolled her eyes. I'm so jealous of that guy, Mavic smiled. He's so awesome. He's got to be some crazy buff genius man to have been on the run so long without being caught. Arella shook her head and stood up. Well, I'm going to go anywhere but here. Wait a minute, Elf. I need to talk to you. Hey, Kayla, you mind giving us a minute? Yeah, sure. It's my shift anyway. She stood and walked toward the crowd in front of the palace gates. What's up? Arella asked. His expression transformed instantly to a look of concern. It occurred to Arella what a good actor Mavic could be. Laying on the charm a second ago had been an act. Ella, she's here. Morella's here at the palace. How do you know? When I was out there, Morella came out on her balcony disguised as the queen. And she just stood there. Arella frowned. Morella said she'd come looking for us. But she didn't. She went back to the palace and went back to playing queen. Did anyone else see her? Yes. Hmm. Arella tried not to show how disturbed she was. Either Morella had lied to them, or there was some emergency she was dealing with. She decided to be optimistic. Maybe she had to go check on the king. There's no way that poison has affected his memory for this long, and maybe if we shout loud enough when it's our turn, she'll see us and help us. I don't know, Ella, but I think something is very wrong. Arella nervously bit her lip. Seeing her unease, Mavic quickly clamped his mouth shut. He clearly did not intend to alarm her and felt guilty about letting her in on his worries. He shifted his tone and attitude to comfort her. Calm down, elf. You worry too much. It's going to work out. Plus, they're making food back at camp. Come on, I'll race you. He jumped to his feet and bounced from foot to foot like an excited puppy. Arella was not amused. I'm not a little kid, Mavic. Mavic raised an eyebrow. Loser has to go ask Breen about his thoughts on the statistical probability of... Arella sprinted toward camp before Mavic could finish his sentence. That night, Arella could not fall asleep, no matter how hard she tried. It probably had something to do with sleeping in front of the palace in the capital of a city where witches were hanged just for existing. Her mind wandered as she lay on the hard ground in a tent by the fire. She couldn't remember the last time she'd slept in a bed. At least she was nice and warm. She could hear the fire crackling as it ate away at the wood and twigs. An owl hooted in the distance, and crickets joined in the nighttime lullaby. The wind gently blew the tent flaps open and closed. The sound was so soothing that she almost drifted off. Then came the voices. From the sound of it, they were right outside her tent, sitting around the fire. Probably five or six campers. They spoke in hushed tones, but she could just make out what they were saying. So who else thinks that Mavic dude and his little sis are hiding something? I don't know what it is, but that guy gives me the creeps. Yeah, me too. There's something off about that guy. I don't trust either of them. I don't see what we can do about it. Bev seems to trust them, and everyone listens to Bev, even when Alec is in charge, who, by the way, seems equally suckered by the siblings creepy. What do they see in them? I don't know. We need to get rid of them. Whoa, Cal, what do you mean get rid of them? I mean kick them out. He kicked a log for emphasis. They're going to ruin everything we've worked for. It's not like we need them or anything. We've got plenty of people without them. How do you expect to do that? I'll do a little persuading. 
He sounded like he was grinning as he said it. I don't know what you mean, ma'am, but if you do something too crazy, Bev and Alec are going to be really mad. No one said you had to help. You can go on pretending everything's fine, but you're the one that said they give you the creeps. What exactly are you wanting to do? Just come find me at first light. He got to his feet and walked away. Their voices trailed off as the rest of the boys followed him away from the fire. Arella laid there with her eyes opened wide. Those kids were going to do something to her and Mavic. She had to warn him. She threw off her covers and stepped out into the night. A chilly breeze blew her hair behind her shoulders and her borrowed nightgown billowed behind her. Mavic was sleeping under the stars on the far side of the camp. She tiptoed around the sleeping bodies, knelt before Mavic, and gently shook his shoulder. Mavic! No response. She poked his face, but he still didn't respond. Mavic, wake up! She whispered. No, I don't want to share my watermelon. Sleep slurred his words. Arella stifled a giggle. Give it back, it's mine. He pulled the blanket tighter around himself. Arella sighed. Mavic, seriously, just wake up. Mavic groaned. What do you mean the pond is gravy? Santa's not going to like that. Mavic, wake up! Arella bit her lip, realizing she'd just spoken in the language of the witches again without meaning to. It seemed to be happening a lot more lately, and it made Arella feel nervous and out of control. Mavic's sleepy eyes squinted open. Sorry, Arella apologized. I think I just manipulated you on accident again. Don't be mad. What did you do that for? He rubbed his face, trying to focus. I need to talk to you. In the middle of the night? I don't think we're safe here. He glared at her. Mavic, I heard some guys talking about how they want to get rid of us. You in particular. Go back to bed. It's probably nothing. He rolled over and was snoring instantly. Arella growled in frustration. He'd never wake up for her unless their lives were in jeopardy, which they weren't right then. But something bad was coming. She'd just have to wake up before anyone else did and convince Mavic they had to run away. I knew staying with these kids was too good to be true. All right, that is the end of that chapter. The next chapter, chapter 24, is called... Mavic spills the beans. Fun fact, that is an idiom. Do you know what it means to spill the beans? All right, so your thinking question is about Morella. Mavic said he saw her on the balcony, but she didn't look at him or respond to him. So what do you think's going on there? Why didn't she respond to seeing Mavic down there joining this protest and all these teenagers shouting and stuff and she just stands there staring out into the distance? What is going on? All right, we are going to read the next chapter tomorrow. Thank you for joining in again, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. When Kayla wasn't looking, Mavic put his thumbs up. Where are my thumbs? I can't talk. Nah. I have to cough. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh no, I coughed into my hand. I'm supposed to cough into your elbow, guys. Elbow. Okay, where was I? No, I don't want to share my watermelon. <laughs> Mavic, how does Mavic talk? What do you mean the pond is gravy? Santa's not going to like that. What do you mean the pond is gravy? Santa's not gonna like that. Santa's not gonna like that. <laughs> <laughs>